So we've talked about particle reduction, odor control. The third PM pope is pathogen control. So using positive and negative ions, they will disrupt the DNA and the RNA cell structure of single cell organisms and it can remove the hydrogen. Now if the organism is a virus, it's not going to have hydrogen in it and it's not a living organism. So if the virus, I'm sorry, if the bacteria or the mold spore has hydrogen, that will get severed and removed from its cellular membrane and it's going to spend its life trying to repair itself and it cannot reproduce. So as far as DNA and RNA type pathogens, which would be your virus, COVID-19 is an RNA uh, virus, we're going to disrupt its RNA structure and that means it won't be able to replicate and it deactivates it uh, in case you did actually inhale it into your body. So once it's deactivated, it cannot grow and, and copy itself. So I tell people it's like hand sanitizer. It kills the germs on your hands, but it does not kill your skin cells. So keeping in mind that Global Plasma's technology is third-party verified by UL as an ozone-free technology per UL 2998, we're not creating ozone, we're not creating byproducts, the aldehydes, and all those other things that can actually break down your lung tissue. And so that's why it's safe for Global Plasma's technology to be operating in your indoor environments while it's being occupied. Many of these other technologies you've seen on the news recently, like foggy machines, ozone generators, vaporized hydrogen peroxide type systems, you cannot be in the space while those systems are operating. With our technology, we're not generating anything that's not already prevalent in the atmosphere as far as ions. So ions are good, they're healthy, uh, they're outdoors in abundance, and we're simply recreating those environments inside, which enable us to kill these pathogens and inactivate them using our technology. Here's an abbreviated list of a lot of the testing that we've had conducted over the years with Global Plasma's technology against uh, the various pathogens you see here. So E. coli, in 15 minutes, we killed 99.68% of that bacteria. MRSA, in 30 minutes, we got 96%. Uh, norovirus, in 30 minutes, we got 93.5% of a deactivation rate. And so I like to point that out because norovirus is actually harder to kill than human coronavirus. Now, we recently received human coronavirus test results back for our residential product, which has almost 50% less ion output than the commercial products that you see here with their results shown. So it took 60 minutes to deactivate 90% of the human coronavirus with our residential product. We're very optimistic that when we start seeing our results in May for the uh, human coronavirus with our commercial product that the time exposed will be less and the deactivation rate is going to be much higher. We hope to be seeing a two to three law reduction with the commercial output devices. Here we have uh, C. diff in 30 minutes. We take 86.5% of that and uh, kill C. diff, which that's very hard to kill because it's a spore. Down here at the bottom, I have a 100% outside air system shown, which you can see this in a lot of OR applications. You can see this in a lot of uh, healthcare applications. And the ionization will uh, keep the coils clean, as well as provide control of contaminants down in the space. Over on the right-hand side, I have ionization shown, as well as UV lights. And on the right side, this is a partial return air, partial outside air system, so it's a mixed air system. And I have UV light shown just to show you that they typically mount on the air leaving side of the coil on the wet side, so they shine on the drain pan, shine on the coil to try to kill the biofilm that grows on the coil. So it's more for energy savings and keeping the coil clean than pathogen control. So ionization in this application will treat the coil as well and go out into the space. Now, if you remember, the COVID-19 virus is 0.12 microns, very, very small very little to no surface area. So for it to move back, get through the filters, get through the coil, and get in front of those UV lights, it's almost improbable that that's going to happen. And so you really need an active technology to control these contaminants in the space, such as needlepoint bipolar ionization, which can now come into the space and control those contaminants. If it is a healthcare application and there are final filters, just keep in mind, filters stop ions. So you have to put another set of bars after the final filters and healthcare applications to treat the space. When talking about viruses, there are generally three groups that we want to discuss. 
The first is enveloped viruses, which are the easiest to kill, and that would be like your influenza A virus as well as your COVID-19 virus. Large non-enveloped viruses are more difficult to kill, which would be like your rotavirus, and then the smallest non-enveloped viruses are the hardest to kill, and that's norovirus. So as I already mentioned, we have commercial product testing that shows we deactivated 93.5% of the norovirus in 30 minutes. So our commercial products should do a much better job at deactivating the influenza A as well as the uh, COVID, uh, I'm sorry, not COVID-19, but the uh, human coronavirus 229E. We do have our technology at the lab waiting in line to be tested for COVID-19, but those samples are not going to be available until sometime in the mid-June time range. So once the samples are tested against our technology, it takes 10 days for them to try to grow in the petri dish uh, after the test to prove that it did in fact kill it or deactivate it and it's not going to grow after exposure to the technology. So we should see results back in sometime early July because of that incubation period of 10 days. This is a slide that I found in a 2009 EPA technical paper discussing the percentage of SARS virus that filters can capture compared with uh, or combined with UV light and the filter efficiency. And just so to be clear, the third column, filter plus ionization, I added this column because I wanted to show the MERV increase efficiency and what that can do for you as far as the virus is concerned with the ionization technology. So if you have just a MERV-8 filter with no UV light, no ionization, that's going to give you about 11% capture of the SARS virus. With filter plus UVC, it increases that to 19%. And then over on the far right, you see a MERV-8 filter with ionization, 84%. Keep in mind that with ionization technology, we are increasing the MERV rating from a MERV-8 to a MERV-13 filter. So now, with a MERV-13 filter, you can get 46% of the virus just by itself. Filter plus UV is 84%, so I'm taking the filter plus UV at 84% and plugging that in to the MERV-8 section for filter plus ionization because of the shifting of the MERV rating, plus the fact that bipolar ionization has been third-party certified to kill uh, bacteria as well as deactivate virus. And so as you get more efficient with your, with your filters, the technology you're supplementing to it is becoming less and less effective. Uh, but keep in mind with ionization, it's going out into the space if it's after the final filters in a healthcare application and it's helping to bring the particles back which could have your virus and bacteria attached to it. And we've actually seen in real world clinical testing where airborne viable bacteria is being reduced by substantial levels even in an OR environment, so keep that in mind.